With part one of the 2019 WWE Draft in the books, I'm here to break it all down. I'm here with your WWE 2019 Draft coverage. I'm Forever Young. Let's get to it. kicked off with former SHIELD members Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns going at it with Seth Rollins representing Raw and Roman Reigns representing SmackDown which I didn't quite understand because how could one be representing the other when we're in the middle of a draft right now but the match was good nonetheless the ending came when Roman Reigns attempted a spear and Seth Rollins countered into an inverted pedigree as he could not cradle the arms fast enough before going down. The big dog kicked out at two nonetheless but as the architect tried to figure out his next move we started hearing the sounds of the fiend and the fiend came from under the ring and pulled Seth into a hole inside the ring thus causing a DQ with Seth Rollins being the winner which means Raw gets the first pick. Now, I didn't quite understand this because later on the commentary team explained that Raw got three picks and SmackDown got two picks so either way wouldn't Raw have to have went first? Then we get a look inside of the USA boardroom and the Fox boardroom, which I thought was pretty cool with people just making phone calls and writing stuff down and typing on a computer trying to figure out who their next draft pick will be. But then I just had to think to myself, shouldn't they have already had this figured out? We get back from commercial break and we see Stephanie McMahon make her triumphant return to a lot of booze. But she's here to basically tell us who's being drafted where. So Raw started off with the first draft pick with the man Becky Lynch. So Becky Lynch will remain on Monday Night Raw as she is the Raw Women's Champion. So it would have been quite awkward if SmackDown would have drafted her. SmackDown's first pick went to the big dog Roman Reigns, which I found ironic because he just lost to Seth Rollins. Raw's second pick was the OC, which I thought was an amazing pick because not only do you get AJ Styles, who's probably the best wrestler on the main roster, but you also get the OC as a tag team. Keep the group together and you got three for the price of one. Next, we saw SmackDown Live draft The Fiend Bray Wyatt, which you cannot argue with that pick. He's like the hottest thing inside WWE today. The next pick was very questionable and made me question every single thing in life because Raw drafted Drew McIntyre, who we haven't seen on TV in I don't know how long. When Raw drafted Drew McIntyre, I thought to myself, huh, was Charlotte, Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan, even... Kofi Kingston not available? We then find out that the draft only has certain superstars eligible, which makes complete sense. Next we see King Corbin versus Chad Gable, I'm sorry, Shorty Gable, for the hundredth time this month alone, and I know this month is only like a week and a half in. Or maybe two weeks in. I'm not sure. King Corbin gets the win when he reverses Chad Gable's ankle lock into an end of days for the three count. We saw a football-like round table of guys discussing who their first round draft pick would be. And I found this hilarious because most people picked superstars that were no longer alive. Which was basically dating themselves or aging themselves, however you want to put it. We come back from commercial and we got the second round of draft picks which Raw drafted Randy Orton. Which I can't argue with that one. Smack down live drafted Sasha Banks and at this point I said okay Charlotte's not available. Raw drafted Ricochet which I thought was pretty cool but why wouldn't you draft him before Drew McIntyre? Smackdown Live drafted Braun Strowman, which I have to admit, I was kind of not for. I was hoping Braun Strowman stayed on Raw. He's a good pick for Smackdown nonetheless. Even though I'm not a fan of him, I can see the talent. Next up, Monday Night Raw drafted Bobby Lashley, which again, I thought was a questionable decision. Drew McIntyre, we haven't seen in out, I don't know how long, and neither have we seen Bobby Lashley. The most we've seen of him is making out with Lana, so all I can wish is that Rusev gets drafted to Smackdown. We see Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury backstage and we find out that they're going to have a match at Crown Jewel. We see Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman make their way to the ring and Paul Heyman cut an amazing promo as he always does. Brock is looking forward to conquering Cain Velasquez and Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. Paul Heyman lets us know that although Brock Lesnar did have a fear of losing to Cain Velasquez, he is ready and willing to conquer Cain Velasquez inside Saudi Arabia. Right as Paul Heyman was about to say that Brock conquering Cain Velasquez was not a prediction but a spoiler, he gets interrupted by Rey Mysterio and Cain Velasquez as they cut promos from the top of the ramp. Cain Velasquez and Rey Mysterio show a video or freeze frames of Cain Velasquez basically beating, conquering, and victimizing Brock Lesnar back in 2010. And Cain Velasquez says that he promises 
to mess up the other side of Brock Lesnar's face as he did in 2010. I find this hilarious and I cannot wait to see this match. Next up, we see The New Day doing their entrance and I could not help but think, Kofi, why are you so happy? Why are you clapping and dancing and waving your hips when you lost your WWE Championship in five seconds just last week? You were champion for like over 150 days. I think you were the longest reigning champion on the roster at the time and it seems like you just don't care. Brock Lesnar was inside the ring at this moment. Did you not even think to make a face expression or anything to sell it? It made me think that Kofi Kingston reign was just a waste. With all that being said, The New Day had a segment with some breast cancer survivors that I thought was very touching and a very good segment. We see The New Day take on the OC inside of a really good match. The ending came when Kofi Kingston reversed the Ushi Garoshi into a trouble in paradise and pinned AJ Styles for the 1-2-3. I thought this was a really good ending because Kofi Kingston definitely needed a win, especially over someone like AJ Styles after his complete squash from last week. We get to round three of the draft pick and Monday Night Raw drafts Alexa Bliss and I cannot help but think Charlotte's not available. Smackdown Live drafts Lacey Evans and I thought Charlotte's not available. Monday Night Raw drafts Kevin Owens and at this point I thought, so you mean to tell me you drafted Drew McIntyre before Kevin Owens? You mean to tell me you drafted Sasha Banks before Kevin Owens? You mean to tell me you drafted Bobby Lashley before Kevin Owens? This draft. SmackDown Live draft The Revival and I could not help but think you drafted Lacey Evans before The Revival. Monday Night Raw draft Natalia, and I got kind of excited because Stephanie referred to her as the queen of hearts. We get to the final round and Raw drafts the Viking Raiders and I thought, okay, that's a good pick. I'm glad they stayed on Raw. The next pick was from SmackDown as they drafted the Lucha House Party. And I thought, although I'm a big fan of them and I think they have a lot of potential, I love Kalisto and I love Grand Matalik. I think he's one of the best on the roster. I just hope that SmackDown doesn't mess them up. Next up, Monday Night Raw draft Nikki Cross. And at this point, I thought, why didn't you just draft her with Alexa Bliss and save yourself a pick? SmackDown Live drafts Heavy Machinery and I could only think, like, why didn't you just let them go to Raw? Monday Night Raw draft the Street Profits and at that point I just thought Smackdown you would rather have Heavy Machinery than the Street Profits. Are you kidding me? We get to the main event of the evening and that's the Queen Charlotte versus Bayley for the Smackdown Live Women's Championship. I love Charlotte's entrance with the title and the robe and the fireworks. She looked amazing. I'm a big fan of Charlotte Flair. Bayley made her entrance and the music cut off and she decided to basically conquer, destroy, and victimize her Bayley buddies. She literally poked a hole inside of all of them, stabbing them inside the back. This match was really good. Bailey started off really hot and she ended up winning with a small package that didn't really look so great, but it's okay. She's the new SmackDown Women's Champion nonetheless. And at this point, I think Charlotte might be going to Raw. Bailey had new entrance music and she basically called the crowd bitches and said she doesn't give a damn about any of us. But the 2019 draft is inside the books. That's everybody from this half on SmackDown and on Raw. At this point, I'm just thinking we have a lot to look forward to on Monday Night Raw because the likes of Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan, Charlotte Flair, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Samoa Joe are yet to be drafted. So let me know by voting inside the poll above my head, which show do you think won, SmackDown or Raw? Personally, with the likes of AJ Styles, Ricochet, and Becky Lynch, I'm going with Raw. I think they got the better choices at this point. But there's still many, many more drafts to be made. Be sure to tune in for Monday Night Raw's draft. Until next time, y'all, I'm out of here. Be sure to leave this video a like, comment, and subscribe.